We've got uh, Sheriff Richard Mack here in studio with us. I'm going to go to some of your phone calls coming up for people that are patiently holding. The toll-free number to join us, 800-259-9231. And talking to Sheriff Mack, you, you wanted to finish up with something about Waco. I mentioned that it was done as a publicity stunt, and then you talked about your lawyer, but from your Supreme Court case, yeah. actually confirmed that, it, uh, that that is what that was about. It was a staged event. Uh, no question about it. The BATF was uh, being considered uh, to be scaled down or completely dissolved and abolished and have the FBI take over uh, gun enforcement. Uh, and so the BATF knew that they had to stage an event that would prompt Congress to not only not get rid of them, but to make them bigger. And actually, that's what happened. The BATF actually got an increase of money and manpower after the Waco incident. They have the second largest building in D.C. after the Pentagon. BATF does? They have no, a gi gigantic office building, yeah. I didn't know that. They I, just finished it like five years ago. I would have guessed the Department of Education, but that's another one that needs it to go. Well, yeah. it's in a bunch of buildings, yeah. They, they oh. have one giant complex. Oh, okay. See, well, th this is just another example of out-of-control, stupid government that we have today. And uh, the essence of tyranny is the enforcement of stupid laws, and that's what we have going on in our police departments and... and federal government all across the country. I would just add the essence is when they write laws for law-abiding citizens. Look at this article. ATF manager says he shared fast and furious info with White House. We posted that C-SPAN video at InfoWars.com yesterday, but you mm -hmm. talk to Larry Pratt. He's been at the hearings yeah. and uh, give us the bad news and the good news. I mean, it's bad news the White House is this criminal, but the good news is if we keep forcing this issue, this could bring them down like Nixon. Uh, tell us what's happening. Well, uh, quite frankly, this, this is a bigger scandal than Watergate was, and no, no question about it. And that's also in my book. And the title of my book is The, the Magic of Gun Control. And this is, we're seeing the magic all the time, which there isn't any. Uh, it's all an illusion. And right now we have Fast and Furious, which has literally been the biggest scandal since the assassination of JFK. And the reason why it has not gotten the play that Watergate got is plain and simply mainstream media. Now, we have uh, reporter Atkinson. I think his name, her name is Cheryl Atkinson. She actually was one of the first to expose this. She works for CBS no, News. No, strangely enough, CBS broke it. Yeah. And then the Justice Department and said... And then they back off. Well, good ATF did the, their right job and said, look, Border <laughs> yeah. Patrol have been killed. They went yeah. public with this. Yeah. And then they said, you're liars. And it turns out the Attorney General has his perjured himself. Yes. And, and not only that, but they have refused uh, congressional subpoenas, which is against the law. That's a violation of the law. You cannot refuse that. Senator Grassley is uh, so frustrated at the response from the White House. And then when they finally get documents that they've been asking for for weeks, they're all blacked out. And so, and they, and they, then they claim national security, national security about gun running into Mexico. What is national security? We're not at war with Mexico. This isn't, this isn't any secret war or anything we're going at. What is national security? Just show the documents. If you need to take uh, an informant's name out, fine, black that out, but they're 90% blacked out. And so they're nothing. And uh, they're completely And useless. Congress, they're the lawgivers. They, they represent the people, the executive, just like they launched the Libya war without their approval. Right. It's just doing whatever it wants. And now it turns out that the head special agent ATF in charge of Phoenix, who, who and I know it's an oxymoron to say good ATF, right. but he said, look, I'm not going to do this anymore. Uh, right. This is criminal. And it turns out he's told the truth, and he testified that the White House did know. Well, of course, now we know the FBI and DEA were involved. Yes, and a Agent Dodson from the Phoenix office was actually the first one to break this whole thing. Uh, he, ex he exposed it to uh, Atkinson. And uh, so this is the, uh, a gigantic story, but you need to understand, this is our own federal government running guns into Mexico, and the reason they said they were doing it is so they could trace the guns into the cartels. The only way you can trace a gun into a cartel is if it has a GPS unit. There was only two guns with GPS units. So they couldn't trace them anyway. So they had to know that they were going to be used in gun violence. And then Agent Brian Terry, working for the Border Patrol, is shot and killed. His family starts asking for uh, answers. And then Dodson starts telling the truth from the BATF office in Phoenix, exposing his own department, his own office, for the corruption of running these guns down in Mexico. And you need to know, every one of your listeners, you need to absolutely know what this was, is have you ever heard Barack Obama get up and say, 
even since the Gifford shooting in Tucson where Judge Roll was killed, even, if, even since then, you have not heard, even at the memorial service, you have not heard Barack Obama say, we've got to have more gun control. You know he's a gun control fanatic. Everybody he has, Eric Holder, everybody in his cabinet are anti-Second Amendment. They want to do this. This was their way of promoting and making sure gun control would become a second. And by the way, there's total proof. It turns out a year ago, and I was already talking about this at the time, they put out press releases. Holder came to Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, California, and right. gave speeches saying the crime in Mexico is because of U.S. guns. Right. They know they're shipping exactly. them in. And, and, exactly. that, and that's how they, but now it came out in the Miami papers and others that they're shipping them into Miami to go to Honduras. Right. And so this is a lot bigger. It's a lot bigger and it's, again, a lot worse than Watergate. But if we would only get the media, now, who do we have really attacking this? We have Fox News, you, uh, Gun Owners of America, and we still don't have the mainstream newspapers or NBC. Even CBS, who broke this, has backed off and pulled back now. And they act like it's, you know, kit gloves here for some reason. So if the, if the media, if the national media really went after this, uh, this would have already destroyed the presidency of Barack Obama because all of this was an attempt to promote uh, backdoor uh, gun control in America and destroy the Second Amendment. That's all what this was about. It was a political ploy by the White House, by this Justice Well, Department. we've had the ATF in Austin send illegals into gun shows. You know, 90 plus percent are dealers, right. but private people, if I want to go sell one of my guns, I can right. walk in with it and sell it. They they want to shut that down so you can't give your grandson a gun or you can't mm -hmm. buy your dad a gun. I bought my dad a gun before. He's bought me a gun before, many, right. many guns when I was young. Right. And so, so, so they can actually register and track everything. Right. And we've caught them all over the country. They send illegals in to buy it from some grandpa. Then they arrest the grandpa in the parking lot and shut the gun show down. Mayor Bloomberg sent his own officers from New York City to a gun show in Phoenix to do the same thing. And he did that to Bob Templeton of the uh, Crossroads of the West gun shows. So it's not the same feds thing. out of their jurisdiction now. It's Mr. Gun Ban Bloomberg. Right, exactly. A Republican, you know, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it's, get, it's getting so crazy out there. People think we make this stuff up, Alex. You know, truth is stranger than fiction, and folks, every bit of this is documented, and uh, I, I think, it, I, I really believe that this is going to destroy the Obama administration. Well, you said you talked to Pratt, and he, and, and it's been confirmed it goes right up to Obama, who is a yeah. state senator, called for, I've, I've read the quotes, complete abolition of the Second Amendment. Oh, of course. that's That's been their goal. They've just had to, uh, they know that there isn't congressional support for it. They know that there isn't American support for gun control. So they had to fabricate another way to do it, just like he fabricated the health care crisis to bring in his Obamacare. That is how this man moves. He is a subterfuge specialist, and he is the one that has made this an agenda to make sure that they created enough ire and enough public outcry for gun But control. I do find it encouraging that, that the ATF, <clears throat> people actually started blowing the whistle. Of course, uh, there I mean, are I, good people. This proves there are good people in government. And if there weren't, I'd be out of a job tomorrow. I wouldn't have a, a goal and a purpose in what I'm doing. I'd love to be out of this job. Me too. Let's work ourselves out of a job. We'd live in a free country. That's exactly what I'm after. I've told my wife and kids that I'd love. Well, to people work ask out me, of a job. why do you get so upset? Why do you work so hard? At an instinctive level, I get chills talking about it. Being a slave, having mm -hmm. my guns taken, having a government mm -hmm. that can raise taxes to destroy my future, to have these corrupt interests selling our jobs out. I mean, you'd be crazy to not constantly work against this. Exactly. I mean, people think we're like heroes because we fight tyranny. That's You're not going to have freedom if you don't fight tyranny. It's an eternal battle. I mean, why do you fight corruption? Well, it's about freedom and liberty. Uh, and that's why I owe it to my kids and my grandkids. And uh, uh, if if I'm free and you're not, then I'm not free. When you're with your grandkids, because they're the sweet little innocent toddlers. I don't, I don't know if they're that age. Yeah, or, they are. But with my children, every time I'm reading to my little daughter, she's almost four. I love when they're little. Yeah. She's so sweet. I, and she's so innocent and good. All I'm thinking about is we've got to beat the New World Order. We've got to beat the New World exactly. Order. Exactly. Exactly. And the corruption that's in government is something that I cannot tolerate, and I won't. And I believe that there's a lot of good sheriffs out there that will join us in this great cause. And I'm asking your listeners to join us in that great cause. I need support. I need help with this. I'm doing as much as I can. 
and I'm traveling, and I'm almost exhausted with the traveling. How look key at my is it to, to, to reach out to juries, grand juries, and sheriffs and to take the states back? For those that don't know, the founders built this in yeah. uh, as a balance of power against an out-of-control federal government. Well, the, the sheriff is actually vital in every bit of that. State sovereignty is still something the sheriff should be very concerned about. They need to be enforcing that. Uh, juries, absolutely, yes. But the bottom line is the sheriff will determine what is and what is not enforced in your county. And so we take back America sheriff by sheriff, county by county, state by state. We make the federal government irrelevant. The corruption coming out of Washington, D.C., and I'm going to tell you right now, the small arms ban that the United Nations is trying to work out with Hillary Clinton right now, there isn't anything that the U.N. and the federal government are trying to do to us that the sheriffs can't stop. Exactly. Uh, uh, when they couldn't get Congress to pass the carbon taxes, they had Obama do it executively, mm -hmm. and then they admitted at the Copenhagen meeting two years ago, led by Schwarzenegger, mm -hmm. we're going to go to the cities and do it, and they marched into Austin, San Francisco, and other cities and put carbon taxes on us. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they, they, these are lawless, scumbag criminals. Right. And if there was nothing more uh, evident <gasps> of that, then just look at the process going on right now, the sausage being grinded out through this ridiculous economic process. What you can know for certain with all of this, looking at 14.5 trillion in debt and our obligations up to about 90 trillion dollars, what you can know is that every bit of that was thievery, corruption, and your government at work at its worst. And that's why this, we have got to find a way to make uh, Washington DC irrelevant financially, economically, and uh, socially. And the sheriffs and the state governments can do that. You get governors and sheriffs working together on this holy cause of liberty. We'll get freedom back tomorrow. And that's why they're set up the rural councils, the governor's councils, the mayor's councils. They fly them all up there. Those that are toadies get put on special boards and then get more federal money. I mean, this is just how the Soviets controlled their satellites the system they're setting up. Uh, I want to go to some phone calls for Sheriff Richard Mack here today. Jeff in Louisiana, you're on the air. Welcome, sir. Hey, Jeff, how you doing? Hey. Yes, welcome. You're on the air. I just wanted to say thanks for everything. And, um, yeah, I worked with uh, NOPD. I'm in the National Guard, and I worked with the New Orleans Police Department. Um three years after Hurricane Katrina, which I'm sure, you know, it was all over the news everybody knows about. And um the gun confiscation. Oh no 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 not that. It was a no, but I'm saying the first chance the feds had they did it. They said we're not bringing food and water. We're coming into the neighborhood and <laughs> take your guns. But uh, go ahead and make your point, sir. Sorry. No, I it was just going along with everything you're saying about federalizing police and uh um you know the military to work with the with the police. But um I don't know exactly what is going on with the NOPD, but they are federalized now. So I don't know if, you know, who's working with them, but they may be trying to. Well, New Orleans, I mean, New Orleans, NOPD has had problems way before uh, Katrina, and they've been very corrupt. Uh, I've, I've followed that one uh, uh, for the last 15 years, and their, their corruption there has been widespread and very well known, and man, have they had problems. Remember the cops in Walmart stealing everything? Oh, yeah, sure. And, that, and they thought it was fine. You know, they're being interviewed while they're doing it. You know, that, that's typical of how far gone New Orleans PD has gone. What about New York PD? I have footage where they go up to peaceful activists protesting with permits and say, uh, leave or we're going to say you have bombs. And they go, we don't have bombs. They go, well, we know you don't. We're going to put you in jail for bombs. Yeah. And then they let them go with tape. Yeah. Say, I mean, that's a felony. Yeah. A cop saying, I'm going to say you got a bomb. Yeah. I mean, that, that shows total criminal confidence. Well, of course. Of course. And, and we've got to have a way to combat that. And I believe we do. And we have some great sheriffs, even back in New York. We've got some great sheriffs that are coming on board. Because they're elected. Anything else, exactly. caller? All right, Jeff, I appreciate your call. I mean, it's such common sense that 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 that, that the, the the police in your area are under state law and they, they're elected by you. I mean, yeah. and, and then the sheriff, you know, is actually going after criminals and, and, and working with the citizens. And if they need more help, get your guns, boys. We got, we got a guy on the loose. I mean, my, my mother growing up, 
in Hyde Park in Austin, Texas, the state hospital's like a mile away. Mm -hmm. And uh, they routinely would have the police come through, and, and, and my grandpa would go out, and they'd say, hey, uh, get your rifles. You know, you know, we got a dangerous, violent nut that's out. Help us. Right. Or if there was a rabid dog, they'd just go out in the middle of Austin, just shoot it. Or when you had the tower shooting, all the citizens with their guns. Look at how much we've changed since then.